over two years for the new GPUs from NVIDIA, the cover was lifted on the new RTX 50 series at CES earlier this month. Unsurprisingly, we're very excited to see what the new cards are capable of, but there is a big question mark hanging over the recent announcements. Is your system 50 series ready? Well, after they were unveiled, we got to take a look at the new cooler designs from the board partners, including Asus, Gigabyte, MSI and Zotac, to name just a few. And it looks like there'll be some hefty designs, some being over 350 millimeters long. So case compatibility is definitely going to be a consideration and whether or not your long awaited upgrade will fit in your system. So you definitely need to check your case specs fully when making this purchase. Or of course, you could upgrade that too. Cases such as the newly refreshed Corsair 5000T with its support for up to 400 millimeter cards is a good example of a no compromise chassis that will comfortably house the new GPUs. Following on from the 40 series shift to higher power draw cards, power supplies are going to be another consideration for those looking to upgrade to the next gen. With the four cards that have been announced, the minimum PSU requirements are as follows. 650 watt for the RTX 5070, 750 watt for the 5070 Ti, 850 watt for the 5080 and 1000 watt for the 5090. However, it is worth mentioning that these specs are from NVIDIA's own site and some partner cards may vary on their requirements. Typically, a good rule of thumb, however, is to go a step above on the wattage for the card that you're using. For example, a 1200 watt PSU for an RTX 5090, rather than riding that line of minimum requirements, just gives your system a little bit of headroom. A few notable power supplies to consider would be the Corsair AX and HX ranges with wattages going up to 1600 watts and with compatibility with the PCIe 5 16 pin connector. If you already have one and don't feel like it needs an upgrade quite yet, you are able to buy a single cable to replace the 16 pin adapter that you usually get in the box with your new GPU. Now, moving on to something that you might possibly overlook when upgrading your GPU, your monitor. This can actually make or break your experience with a new card, and by this we mean pairing the right monitor with the card you have or plan to upgrade to. Something like a 1080p monitor, even with a high refresh rate display, wouldn't be a good match for, say, an RTX 5080, as it isn't necessarily as cut and dry as more power equaling more frames. As we don't yet know the performance numbers of the new cards, monitor specs are a difficult one to suggest for upgrades. However, we can get a rough idea based on the performance available from the outgoing RTX 40 series, starting with the 5070 and 5070 Ti, 1440p resolutions and high refresh rates such as 165Hz would be the ideal pairing we'd suggest. Looking back at the previous RTX 4070 Ti, handling heavy hitting games like Cyberpunk 2077 with ease, averaging around 90fps at 1440p meaning the successors of the 4070 Ti should be looking only to improve on that performance. Moving up to the RTX 5080 and 5090, well, 4K looks to be the target resolution for these. So some of the new displays from the likes of Asus that feature 4K OLED screens and high refresh rates would be the perfect fit for these. If you are unsure, however, it'd definitely be worth waiting for the reviews to see exact performance numbers per resolution, and you can always reach out to us if you have any questions. Now on to CPU, and we've seen with the 40 series that some games perform virtually the same on both the RTX 4080 and 4090, and that's due to the CPU itself being the bottleneck, meaning that the performance of the graphics card exceeds the performance that the processor is able to keep up with, potentially resulting in loss of performance compared to lower tier cards. So the same applies here with pairing the right chip with the right card. Cores and threads don't always tell the whole story of performance either. For 50 series, ideally something from the AMD Ryzen 9000 series, Intel Core Ultra Series or 14th Gen would be a perfect fit for the new cards, utilizing DDR5 memory and PCIe 5 support to ensure that you'd be getting the most out of your shiny new card. Now, of course, we could go into more detail here, but a lot of this will depend on what card you choose and what specs you already have. 
To help further, we've dropped a link down in the description highlighting some 50 series upgrade options for everything that we've mentioned in this video. So do please take a look at that so you can make sure that you are ready for the RTX 50 series. And if you are going to be upgrading, then which card are you going to go for? Let us know in the comments below and do leave us a like if you found this video helpful. To make sure that you don't miss more videos like this one, then subscribe to be kept up to date. Thanks for watching and see you soon.